folks. Welcome back to our On The Money YouTube channel powered by Allied Wealth. Matt Stevenson here, and today I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about the dreaded I word. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk a little bit about inflation here today, and I think it's important to take some time for that. It's one of the biggest concerns that we hear about when folks come to meet us in the office, and I certainly understand that. We share those concerns based on everything that we're seeing right now with the market, economy, understanding the true impact that inflation will have on you, and some ideas around how to inflation proof your retirement plan is exactly what we're gonna focus on here for the next few minutes. But before we dive too deep into that, I think it's important to understand what the heck inflation really is to begin with. And in a general sense, when we think about inflation, is simply defined as the rate at which the cost of goods and services increases over time. And so our dollars that we use to buy these goods and services, we go to the grocery store, buy a new car, it's really the purchasing power tied to those dollars. And so the higher the rate of inflation, the less purchasing power our money has to buy those goods and services. Now, not all is equal over the last several decades. Certainly, we've seen the cost of a lot of things go up dramatically. Uh, hospital services, uh, health care, housing, uh, food and beverage, things like that have increased rapidly, especially over the last several years. But there are some goods and services that have actually come down in cost as technology has improved and it's become more efficient to make those. Uh, furniture, new cars, uh, clothing, things like that. Even your cell phone that you use every day have actually gotten cheaper over time. But when we think about the long-term impact and effects of inflation, they're very real, ladies and gentlemen. If we go back a few decades to the mid-70s, really the last time that we had a huge spike in inflation, when we think about things like the minimum wage, it was about two bucks an hour. Fast forward to now, $7.25 an hour. That's an increase of about 250% over that 40 to 50 year time frame. Things like our household median income has gone from about $13,000 a year to about $78,000 per year. It's an increase of almost 500%. But think about this as well. Things like the cost of a new car has gone up almost 1,300%. The cost of a new home, almost 800%, and things directly impacting your retirement future and healthcare, like long-term care expense, has gone up almost 2,000% over that same time frame. And so a lot of these goods and services and their cost increase is outpacing the rate of income uh, that Americans make every day, every year. And so thinking about specifically this environment that we're in, it's very much a case of what goes up really needs to come down. And our good friends with the Federal Reserve and the government, they've done a lot over the last year plus to raise the interest rate environment. And the reason why they're doing that is that typically helps to cool down the rate of inflation reel in the economy, make sure everything's firing on all cylinders, and we can move forward from there. But it's been a bit of a mixed bag, certainly. But understanding as they've raised the interest rate environment, let's talk specifically about the tools and resources we may use to build a retirement plan and how that's impacting things. First, let's talk about the bond market for a second. The bond market's interesting because it has this uh, seesaw relationship, if you will, to the interest rate environment. And so as interest rates have gone up substantially over the last year plus, that's actually uh, dampened the value of most bond investments out there, uh, pretty heavily in fact. Now for decades, it was great to be a bond investor. If we go back to the early 80s, Till now, basically a 40 year time frame, the bond market has gone up substantially. Even just thinking about the period from 1980 to the year 2000, 
the bond market increased by about 900% over that 20 year time frame. But now we're in very much the opposite type of uh, situation where as interest rates have gone up, it's certainly having, having a negative impact on the value of uh, your bond portfolio. Now I wanted to talk also specifically about those of you guys and gals that may have a pension plan. A lot of our retirees here in the Houston area, especially that work for these big oil and gas energy companies, maybe in the technology sector, healthcare, a lot of you may have uh, a pension plan. And so when you think about your pension, it basically acts like a huge bond fund. And so that relationship we just described very much impacts the value of your pension as well. So as interest rates have gone up substantially here recently, it's having a negative impact on the value of your pension as well. And so this is one of the key things that we talk about with our clients and people that come to see us is if we have a pension, making sure that we time things right in combination with the other tools in the tool belt, these other resources that you've built over the years to make sure that they're all working as effectively together as possible. Folks, the last thing we want you to do is have worked your tail off all these years and now spend a couple of years working for free as we see the value of those pension plans go down a bit. Now, certainly thinking about the stock and the bond market as well, we see the impact of inflation. And here I've got two lines on the screen. The darker blue line is in fact the S&P 500 going back to the beginning of 2022 until right now where we sit in March of 2023. And so down about 19 to 20% over that time frame. So a lot of uncertainty around where the economy is, the rate of inflation. But we also see that lighter blue line that represents the bond market here the aggregate bond index, which tracks all kinds of different bond investments and tools. But you'll notice it's down almost as much over that same time frame, And so that really corresponds to that rate of inflation, as we've seen that spike, as interest rates have gone up to combat inflation, it's having that negative impact on the bond environment too. Now really what all this ties to is how do we inflation proof a retirement plan? Now a lot of us may have heard about some of this conventional financial wisdom. When we see market cycles like this, a lot of folks have heard, you know, we have to buy and hold. We've got to stick with it. The market always comes back and you know, that's more or less been true depending on the time frame that we look at. But this idea of conventional financial wisdom, that we can have some mix of stocks and bonds and let things ride through the volatility, it's becoming less and less impactful as we see all these uncertainties more frequently in today's environment. Think about it, guys and gals. Going back to 2018, we've seen so much volatility and huge drawdowns or losses just in the stock market alone, let alone the bond market and what we've seen over the last year there. And so when we look to build a retirement plan, understanding that there are some alternatives to just more of a passive buy and hold approach, we can be more tactical in nature, bring in other tools that typically do well in a high inflationary environment, things like real estate, things such as commodities that traditionally do well in these types of environments, but how might we look at incorporating all these tools in the tool belt to make sure that we can make it the next 20 to 30 years without a paycheck once we retire and not run out of money or income in the process. Folks, if you like the content that we put out there, please hit the like button below and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more content to come. See you soon.